Hi guys, so I wanted to do um, just a little video talking about um, first time readers. So I got a question yesterday about um, uh, someone wanted to learn how to read the cards but they don't know if they should start with the Rider Waite deck. So Rider Waite is like this one. This is a this is a version of a Rider Waite. So this is the Golden Rider. Um, but Rider Waite is very similar to the images that you see everywhere. You will know it's a Rider Waite deck because they're pretty much like the stereotypical tarot 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 images. Most tarot books that teach you how to read the cards will use versions of the Rider Waite in their in their books. Um, it's just a more widely known type of card. Now, just because you see it everywhere and just because people say that they learn how to read the tarot with that deck and whatnot does not mean you have to use it. Um, so I think the, the question that I got yesterday was, um, if I don't, I don't vibe with the Red or White deck, but should I still use it anyway to learn the tarot? My answer to that is no. Um, if you don't like the artwork, if you are not attracted to it, if you don't, if it doesn't do anything for you, don't use it. Um, I think it's very important that you like the artwork and that you really like the deck that you are using, that you are going to be learning with. Um, what is the point if you're not going to enjoy the artwork? If you're not going to enjoy the artwork, you're not going to want to use the deck. Um, plain and simple. There have been times where I will buy a deck and I just don't vibe with the artwork and I'll end up not using it. I'll resell it. Um, I've gifted decks to people because I just didn't use them. It's, it is, it is hard to want to read with the cards when you are just not vibing with the artwork and there's nothing wrong with it. There is nothing wrong with not enjoying the right away deck. Okay. Now, You'll probably hear a lot of readers, myself included, will say, oh yes, you know, the Rider Waite is the best deck to work with. That's the best one to start start off with because maybe we vibed with it. I know I did. I learned with the Rider Waite, but it's not for everybody. And if you don't vibe with it, you don't have to use it. So I just want to make sure that you guys are, um, you you are aware that you don't have to you don't have to use a deck just because everybody else does it. Um, find something that works for you, you know? That is why the internet is amazing because you can Google so many different decks before you even buy them so you can have an idea of what they look like. And if you like the way a certain deck looks, buy it, you know? If you know that that's going to be one that you're going to use to read the cards with, you should totally buy it. There is nothing wrong with that. Um, like I said, you are going to want to be using your cards more often. Um, if you have a deck that you just vibe with, if you just love the images, if you can intuitively connect with them, you're going to want to use them all the time. And that's a plus. I think that that's really important. If you don't like a tarot deck, you're not going to want to use it. So that's just like one of the things I wanted to mention is it's just don't worry about what other people say. Some readers are so like gung-ho about you have to use Rider Waite. I'm not one of those readers. I don't think you have to. <laughs> it is one of my favorites, but it's not. It's not for everybody, and that's okay. Some of, the, some of the decks that I don't like, other people love. It's just we're all different. Some of us are gonna connect with certain artwork. Some of us aren't. Um, so I just wanted to put that out there and, and let you know. Um, another thing, like, cause I just want to talk about, I just want to talk about new, new tarot readers. Like when you are first starting your journey, I think it's really valuable to find a deck that you like. And then also if the deck comes with a guidebook, some of them come with like big chunky guidebooks. Perfect. But if your deck doesn't come with anything, it just comes with like that little white book. I think this one has it <laughs> like a little white book that's like, it's not going to do much for you. Um, there are tarot books out there that are really, really valuable, really good with good information. The only downfall is you're most likely going to have a guidebook that's going to have right away images on it. So um, sometimes the decks will have come with their very own guidebook. And I say, just use that. 
Um, I always tell like my tarot students when I've taught some classes that the best way to learn is looking at each card and getting a feel for each picture. What is the picture telling you? What keywords come to mind? You can also look at your guidebook and write down certain keywords. But what I always say is don't be so focused on memorizing the entire meaning of the card. You're not gonna memorize the whole thing unless you're amazing at it, then create. But look at the card. I mean, if this was like your first time looking at a two of cups, obviously you could tell there's some sort of connection happening here, right? Is it a love connection? Is it a friendship? It could be both. Um, and then as you start reading, you're gonna be able to intuitively make connections with the card that are maybe not love related. Maybe it's talking about friendships. Maybe it's talking about a business deal um, or an interview. You know what I mean? But all you gotta do is look at the pictures and you can get so much out of it intuitively by just looking at the image. That's like one way I always tell my students. Um, if you don't wanna worry about memorizing amazing, crazy <laughs> definitions, I didn't. Literally, for each card, I could tell you keywords. Patience, balance, trust, meditation, death, um, like literally thinking, consideration, or a timeout. This one would be what? Like an overflow, because you see it's overflowing. Cups is energy, the energy of what? Love and emotions. So an overflowing of emotion, release, um, confessions. So as I'm saying, when you guys are first learning the cards, you just pick at least three keywords for each card. Write it down if you have to in a notebook. You can keep a, like a, start your own little tarot journal. But have at least three keywords so that every single time you pull the ace, or the ace, <laughs> the, the knight, no, this is the page, I'm sorry. Every time you pull the page of wands, three keywords are gonna pop up in your head. But then also, as you keep reading and learning, you're gonna be able to connect intuitively so that those key, three keywords may help you if you're like drawing a blank. But then intuitively, you're gonna get other feelings about the card. And that's how you start reading, and that's how you start connecting with your clients. So. Don't worry so much about memorizing everything full-blown, memorizing the symbols and the colors and why this and why that. That comes later. I still don't know at all, honestly. So that's another tip for you guys as readers, beginners. Focus on a couple keywords for each card. And if you do start a little tarot journey, write it down. I start a journal. I have a little tarot journal. Um, and then practice. Reading for yourself, pull one card a day. Um, you could also go through your day and then pull one card at night and reflect on it, you know? So pull a card. Let's see, what do we get? The sun. So maybe if like, say you pulled the sun for the beginning of your day, maybe this is a reminder for you to be optimistic, a reminder for you to have fun, to be more um, just joyful, smile simply smile. It's just a reminder maybe to have a good time. Now, if you pull this at the end of your day, think about how your experience was all day and see how the sun kind of reflected. So I could tell you just based on the kind of day I had today, if I were to pull this tonight, I would tell myself, everything is good. You're healthy. You're fine. It wasn't so bad. So that's like another thing you can do when you're first starting off. When you move on to reading for people, I would say start off with reading for yourself. You can read for fake people, <laughs> make up people. You could read for celebrities, like people who are never gonna see those readings, right? That's a good one way to practice. Another way is if you have friends or family that you can trust that won't judge you, read for them. And then I would say connect with strangers. Um, the best kind of readings and the way of learning is to read for complete strangers. It is easy to read for people that you know because you already know their, their life. So it's kind of like cheating in a way. But you will find if you can connect with a stranger and read for them and to have them tell you to hear the feedback of them saying that was so spot on, it will just add another layer of you feeling confident in yourself 
and in your progress. So when you feel ready to read for other people, do some freebies. If you have a blog, um, I used to do mine on Tumblr. If you can, you can do them on Instagram, Snapchat, however you use, use your social media. And offer freebies, you know, and it's it's a free reading, so there shouldn't be high expectation on the other person's part um, because there's no exchange of money. So it should make you feel a little bit more comfortable to, if you aren't accurate or if you get it wrong, if you get it wrong, um, it's not going to feel as scary because there's no exchange of money at that time. I always say, because people always ask me, when should I start charging for readings? Charge when you know you would charge yourself. Like when you would pay for your own service, that's how you know you're ready. When you don't have to ask yourself, am I ready to start charging for my readings? That's how you know you're ready. When you know you could put down money on you and that the service you're gonna receive is worth that money, that's how you know you're ready. And then you can move on from there. Some people just do tarot as a hobby. Some people do it as a business whatever direction you choose to take it. But tarot is a really good way to, to kind of dive in psychically. It's also a great way to dive in spiritually and also to help you learn and grow in yourself in your own way. It's very therapeutic. It's very like, um, people think of it as it's just a fortune teller game. It's not. It's a really great way to look at yourself to gain insight and guidance, and also to help you um, just learn more about you and your path and your and your life. Um, but there's no right or wrong way to go about learning the tarot, you guys. I also wanted to make sure I say that in this video. There's no right or wrong way. Don't ever let anyone tell you that you're doing it wrong um, if you're learning by yourself or if you're taking a certification class. It's There's no right or wrong way. You do it at the pace and at the speed that you need to, and you do it in the way that you want to. And it doesn't matter what deck you work with, because if you're vibing with it and it reads and it talks to you, then that's great. Because if you're gonna use a deck that maybe you don't like, you're not gonna connect. Trust me, <laughs> that's happened to me. Um, so I just wish you all a beautiful journey. I hope that you, this these little tips kind of helped you out. If you have any questions about your process of learning the tarot and starting your journey, leave me some comments below. I will be happy to answer. Um, if you have any full-blown questions, like more insightful, deep questions, send me an email. I will do my best to respond to emails as quickly as I can. Um, and as always, if you would like a private reading with me, go ahead and click the link below. It'll take you to my website. Check me out. Thank you guys for watching and happy tarotting. Talk to you guys later. Love you.